are uh, uh, these are special units of course is really special units and and we see they're dressed up uh, maybe as patients maybe as doctors nurses uh, but they come in of course uh, uh, disguised uh, and, and and we can see the, the images very dramatic images they come in uh, with some of them coming as doctors some of them coming as nurses some of them coming perhaps as as uh, patients I think later on in 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 the movie there, there's even uh, that men with with a, a wheelchair uh, so they come in uh, disguised and uh, are able to kill those three terrorists. Uh, another thing that we're learning uh, as, as we see these uh, very dramatic images is uh, that just like in Gaza, the same thing is happening in the West Bank, in this case in uh, Jenin. Uh, uh, terrorists are using uh, civilian infrastructure and they're using civilian infrastructure that they think that Israel will not target. I mean, what could be safer for them than a hospital, right? Uh, the How you doing, everybody? Simple Sun here. Um so, the Middle East, uh, allegedly a few IDF members, I don't even think it's allegedly, I think uh, the IDF came out and said it was them, um, entered a hospital in the Gaza Strip, um, essentially assassinated three wanted uh, jihadi terrorists, known terrorists, you know, they were wanted, uh, I think even internationally they wanted. Now, uh... It, they they didn't harm anybody else. They dressed up as doctors, snuck into the hospital, waited till the right time. I think there was a few other like backup soldiers as well. Everybody's you know up in arms saying this is this is against some kind of like code of conduct or or, or against some Geneva code or, or or some nonsense that they shouldn't be doing. Right. My personal opinion is they're surrounded by enemies constantly, 100% of the time. Uh, I mean, in and out, just surrounded, basically. They are, are constantly bombarded. They uh, are under attack internationally, nationally. Um, their enemies, adversaries, and even some of their allies are just waiting for them to fail. Uh, my thoughts on it, I say do what you got to do, right? From their perspective... I believe the Israelis just just need to go balls to the wall and and basically protect themselves at any turn, using any pretty much any uh, weapon they have available, with very well what a lot of these people would call scrupulous tactics, because since they're always on the foot of war at all times, my opinion for them is a little different than it is for us, right? Um, like take Nikki Haley. Right, uh, she's a warmonger. As much as uh, people don't want to believe that, um, she's a warmonger as much as you know anybody else. And uh, she was on Fox News talking about Iran and um, how we should interact with them and what should we should do. Uh, we'll take a look at that video and I'll bring you back and we'll talk about it then. You're saying now's the time to hit Iran? Now's the time to hit their leaders. It's different. Don't go and bomb the what country. What about their infrastructure? The infrastructure in Iraq and Syria. You start with that first. You do the sanctions and you take out a couple of their leaders. That's the way in you start. In their country? In their, if they're in their country or you do like Soleimani when they left the country. You figure out where they are. Our special operations can do that. And then you take them out. That will send a message. We've got to do this immediately. So now basically you heard that, right? Uh, it's basically a call for escalation of war, essentially. Um, hit their interests overseas or, or in, in neighboring countries or wherever you find them. Um, and then you escalate there. And he even asked, you know, should you hit in your own country, in their own country? And she was like, yes, you know, hit them where they are, you know. And I get it. You got to show force, uh, strength, basically, right? Um, but let's be honest. We already know where that's going to lead, right? That's going to lead to a World War Three, right? I don't trust Nikki Haley, right? She she is about as corporate as as a rhino could get, right? Um, I think even at this point, MSNBC, you know, secretly they're not saying it, but behind the scenes are actually, you know, I think some of their own people are 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 coming off of it, saying, you know, we might be we as the United States might be going too far. Um, you know, I, I got to be honest with you, I think our support in Ukraine is far overextended. I think we need to back off with that. Um, you know, I blame them. They should have joined NATO years ago. Uh, there was a handout, you know, for them to join NATO. Um, they didn't want to change their own tactics. They didn't want to change their own performance as a country, as a nation. Um, 
and there was this turmoil for them to join, not to join, this, that, and the other. Uh, they chose not to join, and that's the consequence, right? You know, you either join our team or or you're going to be left out in the wild. And now, you know, you know, Monday morning quarterbacks, they want billions upon billions of dollars of our help. And, and all it's going to take is some warmongers to basically start World War III. You know, it's going to be a Russia, Iran, China against the U.S., Israel, and, you know, basically Europe. So, um, but we'll take a look at uh, old Joy Reid from MSNBC. And uh, we'll see what she has to say about, you know, I'm pretty sure she's for war. So we'll find out. Over the weekend, President Biden said he's ready to take action if Congress is serious about solving the border issue. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another fucking war. <laughs> Still trying to kill the deal. See, even uh, old Joy Reid knows. I don't have the clip for you, but she uh, later on in the show came back, apologized. It was like, ah, I was having a conversation about something, something else with somebody else. Uh, so, you know, don't worry about it. I apologize. We're trying to keep you PG-13. You know, blah, 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 right? But they know, right? They they, they might have actually had a script basically given to them. You know, you know don't criticize these people for doing whatever. Because, let's be honest, it, you know, we're going to have a Black Rock. Uh, just the same way we had uh, Dick Cheney's company. You know, his old company. I think there's corporate interest in war. And there always has been and there always will be, right? Just recently, you heard uh, 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 heads of UK military saying their own people need to prepare for basically a war, right? It's not just the, the conscripted, it's not just the military, it's the average citizen should prepare for war. And, you know, in their position, I, I truly believe that, right? Like, we should too. Our... Our issue isn't so much Iran. I mean, yeah, you know, we have our interests overseas and all this, you know. But I think what's going to catch us is internally and allowing everybody and their brother coming through the southern border. And we're basically a truck stop at this point. Um, come on in. We'll give you a bed. We'll give you a phone. We'll give you money. The taxpayers of the United States of America is going to take care of you. Um and guess what? The more enemies we make overseas, the more enemies are going to come to our southern border, the more enemies are going to attack us, and they're going to have leverage against us. Um, so every citizen should be prepared. That's why we have the Second Amendment, right? You have the right to bear arms. Um, the, the only problem is that, you know, we as the people, even though these rights aren't physical, we don't even have that... that idea right because there's literally people fighting against the idea of you defending yourself um because you think the president takes an oath to protect us uh, from all enemies foreign and domestic right and domestic doesn't technically mean you know citizens i mean it can but it doesn't right like it, it, it's it's anybody on our land right so at some point we need to call upon our leaders to do something so you know, we, we're not even focused inside of our own borders or, or our neighbors and our borders. We're, we're so prepared to go to war and die on foreign soil or at least send our people to do this. But we're not willing to fight for our own soil. It, it's the strangest thing, right? Um, everything's coming to a head. We're going to have to wait and see uh, what Biden's, if he's going to follow through, what his orders are. Um, what foreign entities are going to attack us. And again, um, I agree with Israel. I, I, I believe they should go balls to the wall and, and um, protect their country, protect their people, and hunt down anybody that tries to harm them, right? There, there, there's nearly two dozen countries that hate their guts and their proximity. Basically, they, they can drive to their country, right? At least we have oceans to protect us. So, you know, good luck, Israel. Um, we need it too. God bless America, hopefully. And uh, I'm Simple Son. Hit the like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one.